to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton, and welcome to another exclusive Toffee Blues interview. With we're very pleased to be joined by Jan Mucha, the former Everton and Slovakia goalkeeper. First of all, a very warm welcome to the show, Jan. How are you? You yeah, okay, James? I'm all right. All good, thanks. Fantastic. It's uh, great to be able to speak to you. Of course, Jan has recently been appointed as a goalkeeper coach at one of his former clubs, Legia Warsaw. It's a of course, given it's a strange time at the moment, you're currently living in Poland, aren't you, on the training camp? Yes, yes, I'm in uh, in training camp uh, with the club. I work in the in the uh, in the Legia Warsaw club. I played before Everton, and um, we are in the training camp in the Warka. is is not far is not far away from the Warsaw. Almost 50 miles, not far away, and we spent one week here because we start uh, we start season like um, after the coronavirus, uh, and we have f- three and a half weeks to uh, preparation, you know, and uh, we s- we want to spend one training camp together after seven weeks, separating uh, everybody home, you know players, staff, and uh, we decide to travel from one training camp. It's good to see that, obviously, things are moving so quickly in Poland, though, and that you're moving a lot quicker. Of course, it's not... You, your family are still based in the UK, in Liverpool, aren't they? Yes, yes. We st- we still... My kids, uh, four kids, uh, they continue life in the UK, in Liverpool, and they live there and they continue school. We decide... Like this, uh, of course, my my position is is uh, a little bit di- difficult. Uh, I live in in Warsaw, in Poland. I work in here, and uh, and um, it's not it's not perfect. But you know, this this is this is football life. Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult time, of course, but. It's great to see. Hopefully, if we can continue moving forward like this, that maybe it's fingers crossed. We get we get better a lot quicker in the UK, and it won't be long until you get to see your kids, and maybe they can come over to Poland, maybe and be with you for the time being. Because it see it seems to be moving a lot better in Poland than it is here in the UK. Exactly, exactly. Well, of course, I wait for that. In the in East Europe, it's a bit different, uh, difficult situation. Uh, Slovakia also, everybody is almost co- opening um, restaurants. Everybody, we, we start a life, normal life. Uh, not too much people sick, of course. We must be careful, you know, all these things. Uh, uh, but, uh, yes, we are, we, are, we are so happy we... We close our countries so fast, uh, borders, everything, uh, and uh, I think our gov- governments uh, make good job. Um, in in Poland, is forty million people, ten thousand, fifteen thousand is sick, is not so much, and the situation is 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 all right, um, and we are happy. We can. Uh, we can start normal life, trainings, training session, football. Also, we are so close to uh, start season. Uh, we play first game, twenty six cup game, and uh, and uh, and I hope everything, everybody will be healthy, and uh, we can continue um, season. It's brilliant news to hear that. Places in Europe like this are moving so quickly. It's it's great that you've made this kind of progress, and we can only hope here in the UK that we can maybe get to that point sooner rather than later, and everything gets back to normal. We can see each other again. Obviously, of course, we'll start with your time in Legia Warsaw in Poland. It was there in the extra class where you earned your place as Slovakia's number one with your impressive performances. And how does it feel to get to play for your country? How I said, I was a former player, of course. Um, uh, I played 46 games in national team. 
almost eight years and uh, I play in World Cup, Europe, uh, Europe Cup, uh, you know, and, and many interesting games. Uh, yes, something special. Be number one in the in, in the in the national team in your country. So okay, small country, and um, I always try be uh, be be good for for our country because um, uh, we are small. You know, uh, before was Czechoslovakia. This 1960 was really, really nice for for our country. Uh, we won Euro, and um, what I can say, uh, I, I enjoy World Cup, uh, Euro, and that's that was amazing time for me for national team. Of course, your first tournament was the 2010 World Cup, and you didn't do too badly at all. You beat the world champions Italy. How did it feel to play in that game and get a win over the world champions? For every player, is World Cup is the best one. Um, uh, experience, uh, something special, uh, something nice also for me, for my teammates. Um, we play first time in World Cup and... Uh, we we enjoying uh, so much how you said we beat Italy in the last game in the group. Um, uh, our position wasn't perfect. Uh, only only three points can uh, qualify for next round and uh, and that game against world champion Italy was one of the best in so in Slovakia history. Um, we enjoy it so much. We beat then three two, and we qualified for next next stage. I think it was it was a very underrated team. Like we, I think we were we obviously looking through those players. We've got the likes of Marek Hamšík. He weren't short on talent. Yeah, for that time we we had a really really good team, uh, experienced guys who play for for good, good clubs. Not only Marek Hamšík, he played for Napoli. Uh, Martin Skripta, he played for Liverpool. Many good guys in around the world, and um, and uh, we try our best. You know, we are not Brazil, we are not Tiki Taka. Only this is countries, uh, national teams. You can do something with the heart, you know, and always strong. Always strong. You're a very resilient team, and it takes that to beat the champions. Yeah, should be as well, you know. We try always. Uh, uh, it was first time, you know. Our mentality is like this: we we fight for every ball, and um, we qualify for from the next stage. We play against Holland, of course. Uh, Holland beat us two one, but also that game was really nice for us. We fight. Uh, we try. Try Parker for next 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 round, but um, Holland was so good and they qualified for final, you know, and um, uh, they played final against Spain. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was a very good time for yourself, of course. And before that World Cup, of course, you ended up signing a free contract with Everton to come to Goodison and then after the World Cup. What was it like to get approached by Everton and what was how were you approached? Yes, I decided uh, before World Cup signing with Everton uh, because they offer they offer me contract. Uh, they they visit me in, in Warsaw. Uh, first time I met uh, goalkeeper coach Wuzi. He he came to Warsaw and uh, he visit our game. And after the game, we we spend nice time together. And we we speak a little bit about the club. Finch Farm, Goodison Park, and uh, all these things around the club, and uh, and uh, he said he's so interesting to to sign with me. David Moyes also club, and uh, and I decide uh, uh, signing. Uh, I think in, in in March before the World Cup uh, contract with Everton, and um, 
after after World Cup was short holiday and I stay uh, and I start um, working for 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 Everton. It was great, and then obviously you arrived at Everton that summer with. I think our fans were very happy to have you sign for the club because it was the first time we felt we really had a goalkeeper who could push Tim Howard because of your international experience. And what was it like to work with Tim? Did you have a good relationship with Tim Howard? Yes, they, you know, the club, they offered me contract, of course. Um, the manager, David Moyes, and, and, and Woody, and the goalkeeper coach, he said, you will... You will fight with him. Uh, you are not number two, but you know you start like number two. That's normal, you know. And, and the team was number one, and and uh, what I can say, uh, team uh, our rush was on the on the field. We fight, we try, we push each other, and uh, that was important for us, also for me, because I play for national team, and uh, and um, you know you must be always ready for. Um, for for your opportunity, be be ready for if something happened. Uh, you must be in good condition and uh, and help team if 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 they need you. Yes, and uh, and um, yes, I think how I said uh, did our relationship was really good. Uh, not on only only uh, with the. With the team, but with all goalkeepers, also Marcus, the next American guy, he, he was in Everton. Uh, we spent so so nice time, and also with the young goalkeepers, uh, also one uh, one guy from the from the Poland, Mateusz Taudo. He was young and he was in academy. He trained with us, Ross, and this all these guys. Uh, I think we help a lot team uh, for the team. You know, we working hard, like goalkeepers. We do, we done a really good job for 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 the team for the on, on the time. I think I think like you you touched on there, like obviously the friendship between you guys and how close it was. I think that was a the nature of the whole team, though, wasn't it? I think there was players like the likes of Tim Cale and Phil Neville, Seamus Coleman. It was a very close knit team. It was a, the team of very close, good friends, weren't they? Yes, yes, we still now good, good, uh, good friends with him. Cahill, I met him uh, four months ago, and when I've been in in UK, and uh, and uh, after, after I don't know seven years, we met again like uh, like brothers. You know, hi, hi, how are you? And we spent uh, we spent. Uh, Few minutes with the coffee, and uh, in Everton was like this. Uh, not on the field, but also outside. Uh, we spent all the time in restaurants outside, uh, um, and that's so important for the team and um, our relationship. All players, we was like family, and uh, yeah, I think that's important. I always try like go goalkeeper coach now or, or coach. Uh, also now in Legia with the uh, with the uh, with with the uh, with the first manager, uh, you must be a family, you know, because you spend too much time together. Sometimes more like with your family, <laughs> that's that's true. And uh, sometimes you are not available home, and you must be available for the team, for the teammate, for the. For the club, and uh, and that's time you must spend uh, nice, because I, how I said, uh, you are too much together, and um, also this relationship must be must be professional, but also sometimes like you must be like good friend, good like family, you know. And I, I think that really shows in the team. We were always very close and. Everybody seemed to get on well, so it must have been very good to be a part of that dressing room. And the next question I was going to ask you was about the two players who signed the second season. First of all, Dennis Strachwellers. He, he was a very hard worker, and the fans remember him quite well for that. And we, yes. spoke, we spoke to a couple of former teammates of yours, uh, like my guy Gay, recently, and he said that Dennis was a very quiet man. He was very quiet, but he was always in the gym. 
What sort of memories do you have of Dennis Strakolersi? Yes, you know, uh, I played three, three, three years, three seasons for for the for the Everton, and uh, you you met many many interesting players. You know, not always uh, how you said a um, uh, few guys. Uh, Few guys was really nice, but also few guys like Roit, Drenthe, and, and and the players um, um, who not who, who not be always professionals. Uh, and I think uh, I was going to ask you about Royston Drenthe. I mean, what what was he like to work with? It was a very interesting. He was a very interesting character off the field, wasn't he? Maybe for the fans, for the you know newspaper, this TV, he was interested, you know, interesting. Oh, but uh, you know, <clears throat> I accept him. Uh, I think uh, uh, few guys they have problem with him because he was you know so uh, sometimes arrogant, sometimes it's, uh, it was, so it was difficult, un- unprofessional sometimes, and honestly, exactly. Exactly, exactly, and uh, and uh, he wasn't always hundred percent in the team. Uh, his lifestyle was, uh, for me, so difficult. Uh, he he wasn't ready for for training sometimes. He was always late, uh, and uh, and uh, and David after after few few his mistakes, he decided. Uh, Said sorry, Royston, but um, we are a really nice uh, group. Uh, we we wanna be like family, and you are destroyed sometimes. Everything you know, he destroys sometimes all club, not only team, uh, you know, dressing room, but he destroys sometimes all club. That's bad for the reputation. And... Exactly, exactly. I think it was quite interesting, to obviously, to move forward. He was a very talented player. He we bought him from Real Madrid. It was a yes, he had yes, a big career ahead of him. But obviously, it's that's what happens if you don't work hard. Obviously, clearly, as a coach now, that that probably is very important to you as the sort of work rate of a player. It would be as as a goalkeeper coach, and in your new role, you must be always on the lookout for the right kind of work rate and professionalism. Exactly, exactly. In this level, okay, you you can be a little bit extravagant, you know, you can be like star because, you know, the, the all, all the players, they think they are stars, you know, but, you know, you must be professional. On, the, on, on that level, only hard work, team, together, they can, you can do something for the club, for the fans, for the uh, for the toffees, you know, because we play for Everton and for the fans, and uh, you know, the, I know now I'm fans, also Everton fan, and, and also in the club Legia, like Legia Warsaw, uh, we have massive uh, fans. If you if, if you if you see, if, I don't know, YouTube videos like fans uh, um, singing in the in the, in the, in the the games, you know, we play for the fans, uh, and you must be professional uh, every time, every day, because you are the face, you know, club face. It's clear from every word you say that you really get what football is about, and that's that's really it's fantastic to hear you speak this way because not like you say, not every professional football unfortunately gets that, but it's wonderful to hear yeah. that from you. To be honest, of course, we have to ask, obviously, with the likes of Royston and. A few other interesting characters that you worked with. Is that any interesting stories from your career that you'd like to share with us from the Everton dressing room, maybe? Uh, well, I can say, uh, yeah, I was I was close with him. Sometimes he, I spent a little bit time, not too much, because I family and uh, and uh, yeah, a few stories, yes. But uh, I think uh, it's not it's not. Uh, Good to speak about the Royston because these stories can be not not nice for everybody. Uh, but uh, I, 
I, how I said, I, I wasn't problem with the uh, Royston rent. Uh, I accept him. I accept everybody. Uh, that was his career, you know. He decides about his career, you know, and uh, and everybody, every, you know. I'm I'm guy who who respects uh, everyone. And of course, you, you clearly show a far more professional approach to your game, and I think that's probably going to save you well moving on. Of course, you have to do battle. You mentioned before Marcus Hanneman as well when he arrived. What was it like to work alongside him? Because obviously both of you guys were trying to unseat Tim Howard. It was, a, was it great to have another goalkeeper to work with? Yes, Marcus was a brilliant person. Um, really nice guy. And, uh, and, and I never, and I, I never thinking... And I, never, I was always uh, like uh, with this guy, like I feel like uh, he's so... Energy, you know, like American style, you know, team also, you know, I, I've been with the two goalkeepers from U, USA, you know, and uh, I was in the middle and we spent fantastic time on the training sessions with the, with the goalkeeper coach also. And uh, um, Marcus was, you know, cowboy and, and that was something new for me. <laughs> Uh, you know, he his lifestyle. You know, uh, also he he was always with the uh, nice cowboy shoes and uh, and uh, <laughs> brilliant guy, brilliant guy. Uh, that time was how I said one of the best in my life with the goalkeepers, and uh, that time I I really enjoying. That's brilliant, and of course you worked alongside all of you with, like you say before, Woodsy, Chris Woods, the goalkeeping coach. What was your relationship with him like? Yeah, perf- perfect, perfect guide. He, Tim Howard was 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 number one, and uh, of course um, um, he working with with us and uh, really hard, and uh, he tried to um, inspire us uh, always. He, we try together, and you know, for goalkeepers, you have your first goalkeeper, your first trainer is goalkeeper coach because you spend too much time with him. Uh, uh, you start separate um, with the goalkeeper coach, and um, and he tried to <coughs> pushing us all the time, and. Um, now, also with the young goalkeepers, I remember um, I like his style because you know sometimes he's a goalkeeper coach in Europe, goalkeeper coach is in 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 the UK, a little bit different school, but uh, he was between and and he tried he also Tim Howard. He was from America also. He he tried. Uh, uh, teach us a little bit, uh, but um, the training session was always, he was professional, always ready, always helping. Um, if you need something, uh, he was first who helps you and, uh, and um, how I said, always ready. Good sessions uh, uh, with, the, with the head and that was important. That's brilliant. And of course, you say that he had that sort of balance between the sort of European and UK style of coaching what what is yes. the, what would you say is the difference what is different between the the UK and Europe in terms of coaching uh, it's different style a little bit um, here we're working a little bit with the uh, with the coordination uh, goalkeeper in Europe they are more uh, flexible you know for a few things and uh, yes in UK is a little bit different all the all the all the, all the balls uh, um, that style you know that's that's normal um, but uh, I I try you know uh, I have goalkeepers from Poland we have different style and I, I we are already we working like uh, European, like here, you know, um, this school. But but 
that's normal. Many many goalkeepers from the Europe, they are already they are good in UK and uh, and um, they continue with many goalkeeper from the pond in the in the in the UK in the Premier League uh, League One. Kusha before uh, Fabianski, all these all these names. Arthur uh, Boric, I think you succeeded. Arthur Boric, yes. Uh, many many good goalkeepers. We have also one good goalkeeper from Slovakia in Newcastle. Um, yeah, Dubravka. Dubra- yes, and uh, and uh, they they are really good. They 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 playing and uh, they came from you uh, from the uh, is Europe and. They fight, they fight, and they don't have a problem uh, being a good goalkeeper. So, yeah, we've seen plenty of goalkeepers come on to be successful in the UK from Europe, of course. Exactly. You, there's, there's plenty of them, but uh, obviously we'll move on now to your first game for Everton. Uh, you got your first start in the Premier League after Tim Howard got a back injury, which kept him out in March 2013, and... Tim yes. was very Tim was very close to breaking Neville Southall's record for the most consecutive league appearances. He played every game since two thousand and seven exactly. in the league. Yes. And he was close to that record. Obviously he got injured and you come in and we beat Reading three one. How did it feel to get your first start in the Premier League and to get the win as well? Yes, I play only two games in Premier League. Uh, reading uh, was my debut, and um, I was so happy. I remember this that time uh, we play home. Uh, we beat Reading three one, and uh, and for me it was after two years hard work. You know, uh, because I was waiting two years for for, for Premier League. Debut uh, because I play, f- of, of course, the cup games and FA FA Cup and uh, um, yeah, well, cool. Yes, exactly, and these two cups. Uh, but thank you for these two games. Uh, I try, I try my best for for the team. Um, yes, team was injured first game. I remember second game uh, and team. He he said he will he will try before the game uh, warm up uh, uh, how he feel because he was so ambitious and uh, <laughs> yeah, he's a and, he's ruthless and he's a model professional as well. I think Tim Howard. So exactly, exactly. He, he, and, he always wants to play and he wasn't happy. Uh, he must. My, he's injured and uh, I'm on I'm I'm on goal, you know. And uh, the second game uh, against Manchester City, two hours before game, he yeah, he started to be one, but he said, uh, "Sorry, guys, I, I feel I can't play." And 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 and, and uh, I play second game uh, against Manchester City, and and I can say that game was for me amazing. Uh, we beat Manchester City, and uh, and um, that was a massive game for me, and, and I enjoyed this game. Uh, my family was there. My father came from Slovakia. My my family, friends. Um, yes, one of the best game in my career. Like um, for for Everton, hundred percent, one of the the best game. Yeah, it's well. It was one of those. I know a lot of Everton fans who we speak to. We always talk about goalkeeping displays, and I think everybody says that your performance in this game is one of the best performances they've ever seen by an Everton goalkeeper, which is pretty impressive. Given we've had some great keepers over the years, but what do you remember of this game? You made eight saves, and five of them were from close range. I mean, we're talking about Manchester City, who were the champions again. It was similar to the Italy situation. It was. It's so impressive. I mean. You beat the champions clean sheet. Yes. I mean, yes. Do you, what, what do you remember about the saves you made? I remember every save. Yeah, I always said, uh, uh, James, uh, this game was many times one v one, amazing saves. Sometimes you have day like this, you know, and and uh, I enjoyed this game because after that game. Uh, 
David said, uh, thank you, Jan, um, thank you for the team, but you are on the bench again. And then, <laughs> the, you know, uh, I've been in, uh, in the team, best team in the, you know, best 11. Uh, team of the week. Yeah, the week, uh, also best 11 in the world, you know, and after, after that game, uh, how I said, David said, uh, thank you, Jan. Uh, that was an amazing game. Uh, <laughs> but you are on, again on the, on the bench, you know, and, uh, and, and yes, I was. You must you know, have been yeah. frustrated. Yes, that can be frustrated for you, but, uh, you know, thank you for that. You know, I. I I I do my best always. Uh, amazing game for me, in my memory, you know. And um, and that's life, you know. You must continue your life. Uh, and that's yeah. For me, was that time was so 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 sad because you know you are you are the goalkeeper, you know you are the player, and uh, he decides about the first eleven, and he decides who will play, and. Uh, you are, the, you know, one, one is 25 people, you know, 25 players, and only Jelen can play, you know, and uh, and yes, yes, it's a bit frustrating, but okay, now I smiling, you know, uh, how I said thank you for those two games. Reading Manchester City was amazing for me. Against we play home. Uh, the Everton fans, we that game was against Manchester City was like we, we won final, you know, final against I don't know, uh, Champions League or something like that. You know, uh, uh, we were so happy, everybody, fans, team, um, we dancing, perfect game, perfect game. Well, I think we're onto the note of dancing, of course, there's a memorable. Song if apparently Nikita Jelovic went on to score the goal that won us the game 2 0. You yes. apparently you sang a song to Sam Carroll from the Echo about Nikita Jelovic. Could we get a rendition of that song? No, I don't remember this song, but uh, Nikita, you know, he's Croatian and we were so close because we have similar languages. Uh, and we spent, I, I spent with him too much time uh, because, you know, how I said, uh, uh, we have similar me mentality, and, uh, language, everything, and uh, Nikita. Uh, yes, I remember he scored second goal in, in this game. Yeah, apparently there was a song about him as well. But yeah, <laughs> apparently uh, he sang a song. But if we want, <laughs> we, we can gloss over that if you like. Okay. Yeah, we so we move on. There's also the memorable picture of Sylvan Distan. Lifting you in the air after the yes. game. Yeah, still, still a strong guy. Uh, yes, he he took me and he put me up. You know, <laughs> it was funny. It was he, so funny. He always seems whoever whoever has a good game. I think there's a, there's a many pictures of Sylvan Distan lifting a good performer in the air after they've done well in the game. It's brilliant. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Um, Simon, uh, I remember him. Uh, uh, yes, he was always hundred percent. He he, he tried. He, he, he was pleasure to play. For, pleasure for me to play with him and uh, and uh, of course uh, of course uh, uh, that game he 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 enjoyed with me because we we play fantastic game. Uh, he yes, was, he, good he was game. another one. He was a fantastic professional. I think Sylvan Distan was. Yes, he? Great yes, to play yes, with. yes, yes. Amazing guy, big professional. Uh, always ready, always help. Uh, uh, always in the gym. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> he loved yeah. it. Yeah, he loved it. He, he was so strong, you know. Uh, I'm not best in the gym, uh, but he been after the after the training. Uh, one day before, all the time, gym before, after training, amazing, amazing guy. I mean, uh, he's another one who's remembered very fondly. Unfortunately, though, for 
you that was your last game for Everton. I think you, like you say, it was frustrating really that you were dropped to the bench. It's particularly, we wanted to see a bit more of you after you played so well in that game. But of course, Tim Howard was restored to the first choice goalkeeper in the next game. At this point, of course, you would go on to leave at the end of the season. So, was it at this point, did you know you were going to leave in the summer of 2013? Yes, um, the problem was uh, maybe I want to stay with uh, with the team because I feel really good in Liverpool and the club and um, um, my contract my contract I signed for three three years and the problem was David Moyes he changed the club you know he he, he left after twelve years he was yeah, he, he left at the end of that season. Yes, 11 years, so 12, and he left to Manchester United. Then new new manager came, and he he bring the new people, you know, new go new goalies, and then and they they don't offer me new contract, and, and that's football life, you know. And uh, um, how I said, we feel I feel perfect in in, in the club. Uh, of course, I was second goalie, but I. I enjoying time, big experience for me, uh, especially after career. Uh, I can <clears throat> that moment uh, I saw with uh, a lot of interesting, um, a lot of interesting, um, especially in the club, how how all is organized. Uh, the best league on the world, uh, one of the best club of the world, and. Uh, that's for me, you know, after my football career. Um, it's good. Uh, so with all this, and uh, that can help me, like goalkeeper, goalkeeper coach, um, for my next career. And um, I enjoy it so much. How I said, uh, my family still live in Liverpool, and uh, we love it, the city. I love it all. Every day in the in the Liverpool, if I can spend, um, and uh, we will see what's happen. The kids studying Liverpool College, they still live in Liverpool. We will see what's happen in in, in the future, in the future, and uh, and uh, but uh, Liverpool is like my second or third. Uh, oh. Yes, home, maybe home, uh, 100% is first place. They never in Slovakia. My first two kids, they born in, in Warsaw. And the uh, twins, they born in Liverpool. And uh, and they spend, they, they spend almost all, 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 all life in, in Liverpool and the UK. And um, yes, I'm so close with Liverpool, uh, with, with Everton. If I have time, opportunity to... To visit club, I try to call you know the few people who who who, who still working in the in 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 the club. But you know, uh, also in the club, all the model, all the people change and uh, and uh, and uh, but few people st- still there. You know, Jimmy Kidman and Jimmy, all yeah. the guy yes, uh, and. Uh, the guys from academy, uh, goalkeepers, coaches. Uh, I have contact with uh, with a few few people, and that's really nice. If uh, if if I have time and I visit these people, because we spend nice time together, and uh, it's always good memory. We can we can speak, uh, we can drink coffee and speak a little bit. Oh, that's fantastic! And uh, of course, remember like. It was your last game for Everton, was that Manchester City game, and it seems to be the one everybody remembers you by, which was a fantastic performance. And it wasn't the last we saw of you either, because of course you kept a clean sheet against England at Euro 2016. Uh, I was on the bench. We played against yes England uh, in group stage, and uh, and uh, that game was zero zero for us. We fight uh, all game because we. The situation on the table was uh, we needed one point, and um, yeah, yes, we we qualified 
that was uh, group st group stage. That was the last game in Saint Etienne. Yeah, I think yes, in Saint Etienne, and uh, and uh, <laughs> I was for that time I was second goalie. But you know, for me, like uh, professional players, I enjoy World Cup also this Euro. That was also first time for Slovakia. The we qualified to Euro, um, also amazing tournament. Uh, uh, no far away because World Cup was in South South, South Africa. You know, uh, not many fans was there, but in, um, in French Florida. we spent yes perfect time. A lot of fans uh, came from Slovakia. Uh, beautiful stadiums, you know, and uh, also game against Egon, England uh, for a few guys was, you know, against England, you can play every week. <laughs> uh, that's against Italy, Spain, England. I, 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 was, I was always happy with all players. Every player is happy if, if you can play with the best teams, best national teams. Uh, in the world, you know. You didn't do too badly, I think. I think you'll always remember the, the win against Italy at the World Cup. I think that's a... Exactly, not, exactly. Not many people can say they've beaten the world champions. That's very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, that was a surprise for... Believe me, uh, nobody trusts us. Nobody... Uh, um, nobody expects... Against Italy, play. that was the last game in the... Yes, uh, Italy. Everybody, every everybody bets to to Italy, and uh, you know uh, we beat world champion uh, Italy. And yes, for Slovakia, um, the best, 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 best game, best game in history. Of course, like you say, you think you you retired now. You last played to Hamilton in Scotland, and now you're the the coach, of course, for Leg Legia. Uh, what's your like aspirations for the future? What's your career ambition moving forward? Uh, look, I also decided, you know, um, I was 32 and I was thinking um, what is the best for me, you know, after the career, you know, um, because I have a lot of friends, a lot of ex-players, former players um, who who play on the top levels and they they now they they are nobody you know and they have no jobs no ambitions uh, no energy for the life you know and um, and uh, and I decide um, I want to be ready you know I want to be ready for for next steps you know career after career. Because football, your football career, the players, if you are young, you're thinking you will be playing, you know, years and years, you know, uh, and uh, yes, and uh, that way. yeah, yeah, it's like this, you know, and uh, after football career, everybody f forgot for you, you know, if, um, if, if you are not ready, it's so difficult. This is so difficult for the players. Nobody's maybe it's not like nobody's speaking about this, but this is a big problem for the players, you know. And uh, they are not ready for the life after the football. And uh, and I and I decide uh, first I set up union players union. I'm the president of the players union in Slovakia, and uh, and I set up like your PFL and uh, in UK and. Uh, Slovakia was one of the last country we we are we are we, we are not have um, the oh, players they they don't yeah they don't have uh, nobody if you have problem with the with the club and uh, and I decide uh, set up the players union and I president um, last four years and the players and they we have against voting after four four years and they. The players decide again uh, for 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 I will stay and president in this position for the next four years and and also uh, how I said I study uh, professional license uh, in, I, 
I can be goalkeeper coach around the world. I studied that I play football and I was study also uh, uh, my coaching license and uh, future. This is future and uh, how I said I I always try to be ready for for my after uh, career after the career and uh, I love football. You know I love football. I want to. I think um, I'm a guy who know uh, who who done something for the Slovakia. Also, I have experience like uh, goalkeeper, and uh, I love be on the field. You know, I maybe uh, I try to to way. You know, like president of the players in you know, and goalkeeper coach. You Now I can do. Options. Two jobs. It, th yeah, this is not problem because the club in Legia, you know, club like Legia, they accept. I'm the president of players and union, and and we are now so close to FIFA. Pro. FIFA Pro is the um, global is global like FIFA for the for the clubs, and uh, FIFA Pro is for the for the uh, players unions. Uh, now we are close to um, like full member now we are like candidate country and uh, all all this if we have any congresses I must fly also to um, in November 2018 the congress was in the Australia and I fly there the club like accept this and and uh, I take one week off and I fly there And uh, we will see what happens in the future. But if that's possible, I want to continue to this race, and uh, and um, I wanna I wanna teach now. I have um, young goalkeepers in the in the team. Um, we working really hard. We are in first position. We want to be champions. My contract is done in the, in the June, but the cup. Now start they 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 start speak with me for for the for the they want to they want to yeah they want to offer me new contract Fantastic. and uh, and um, yes now it's time to thinking uh, negotiate for 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 your new contract and I want to study you know I want to study I want to teach every day uh, that's amazing for me. You know, like president is is so simple because everything you can do like uh, your laptop or mobile phone. You know, and if I if I need, I fly to Slovakia. Um, this is not far away. Not too far away. And I can organize. I have people in Slovakia who are lawyers or, and uh, the people who are working for for the players every day, like me, and. Um, But I love I love I love football, you know. I love, I love being the team, you know, on the field every day, training, and that's my life, you know. If you and, carry uh, if you carry on if you carry on like this, you won't be far away from it at all. I think you carry on. You have these two different careers to follow, and you're definitely being kept busy with, within the world of football. Exactly, exactly. And uh, now I'm concentrating. I'm focused on the on the. Um, On the, these things, uh, I want to also study the uh, because I have a license for the goalkeeper. I can be goalkeeper coach around the world. Also, I like assistant, but pro, still pro license. And uh, and I want you you study. You, I must study next two years, and uh, after that, I will decide if I go this way or this way. But uh, I want to. Still with football because I love football, I love uh, this game, and uh, and uh, you know if if that's if I have opportunity uh, stay in the club, but I have also dreams. Of course, uh, maybe one time uh, I I want to work in maybe in Premier League. Why not? Uh, my ambition is so high. That's great to hear. It's obviously, best of luck to you for the future as well. I think it's clear you've got a very good future in football ahead of you if you carry on the way you're going. So congratulations for all that and best of luck. 
Uh, okay, thank you, thank you. You're most welcome. And of course, we're going to finish with a few quick fire questions. First of all, who was the best player you played with at Everton? Best player? Uh huh. Oh, it was many, many good players. Luis, uh, Tim Cahill, Arteta. Oh my God. One? <laughs> Give me three. Yeah, <laughs> three names. Uh, Pick, pick a team of five, then go on. Uh, I love uh, because this position is so difficult. Uh, Leighton Banks, he was amazing for me. Left foot, you know, penalties, uh, free kicks. Uh, yeah, I love this guy, uh, like player, you know, uh, he was always uh, uh, up and down. He <laughs> amazing guy, amazing guy. Leighton Banks. Yeah, a, that's a great shout, and I think all our fans will agree. He's one of the most well liked players in our recent history. I think, I think, and great person, of course, fantastic person. Of course, I think every member of that team is pretty well remembered, and that includes yourself. Of course, you're always welcome back at Goodison Park. Do you ever get back to Goodison Park much? Yes, yes, of course, of course. That's fantastic. Of course, obviously, not right now, it's a bit of a difficult time. How often do you get to Goodison? I try one, two times per year, you know, uh, spend any time in Goodison. Uh, last time I've been um, Everton uh, was again uh, Tottenham. That was uh, 7 1, something like that. Yeah, I, I, was, I, I remember that game. Yeah, that was a terrible game. He uh, uh, picked about time to go there. Yes, yes, yes. I spent, uh, I saw with this game. Uh, yeah, that was the last time, my, my, my last visit in, in the game, you know. But it's one of those, obviously, of course, it's a, a different thing, of course, being a coach right now. It's quite busy. Yes. But of course, we know your family is still based in Liverpool. Of course, I think your children are Everton fans. So do you, Exactly, exactly. So, of course, it's, it seems to me that you still very much follow what, how Everton are doing and you cheer the team on? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, my family also like uh, Everton. They, uh, my son is a rugby player, but he was also in goalkeeper for Everton. He, uh, he started like um, in academy, but he decided he want to be a rugby player. A rugby player? Oh. I mean, yes. It's one of them. Pretty impressive, nonetheless. I mean, clearly, it's, it's not the last. It won't be the last time we had the name Moocher in sports in this country, by the sound of it. Look, he, his choice, you know, he's fast uh, winger. You know, he decides. Uh, he, you know, for me, I'm not pushing him. You know, because he must decide. This is his life. You know, if he loves this game, uh, for me, no problem. That sounds like the wisdom of a really good fo footballing coach, to be honest. So, I think you're in the right <laughs> career anyway. Okay. And finally, before we finish, do you have a final message that you want to say to the Everton fans about your time at the club? Uh, what I can say, uh, the best people, uh, amazing, amazing. Uh, I spent uh, many times with the fans. Uh, I always... Try my, my best for the you know, for the club, uh, and uh, if I find time, always I'm so happy to to be to be Everton fan, and uh, yeah, that was amazing time. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, sometimes is. The life is like this, you know, and uh, I'm so proud for for that time, for these three years, three three seasons for the club, for the fans, for Everton people. And as soon as lockdown's over, we'll see you back at Goodison. <laughs> I hope, I hope uh, everything be all right, and uh, we can continue our life with uh, good health and. Um, 
with the football because the, we all football everybody and uh, and, uh, and uh, football is our life also. Hopefully it won't be too long until we get our season back up and running. Of course, it's a lot sooner for you to get yours back up and running and wish you the best of luck and go and win the title for Legia. Okay, thank you very much. Best best of luck in the season for Legia Warsaw and I'm sure we might have a few more Everton fans following their success this season, hopefully. But that is the end of our show. As always, to our viewers, get involved. Let us know your opinion, your memories of Jan Mucher as an Everton player, particularly your opinions on that performance against Manchester City. Of course, if you enjoyed this show, give the video a like. And if you want to see more Everton content, more great content, subscribe to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel. Give us a follow on Twitter as well, at Everton Newsfeed. All that's left for me to say is thank you ever so much to Jan Mucha for taking the time out from your training with Legio Warsaw to join us on the show and give us some great insight to your Everton career. So thank you so much, Jan. Yeah, me too. Thank you very much. Uh, all the best. Thanks. Thank you so much. The pleasure is mine, Jan. And of course, to you guys out there, thank you for watching on the Toffee Blues.